How's everyone doing? Mask here, and of course, as you all know, the Pegasus event is now live. And we've had a couple, uh, we've had a little time, a little bit of time now to farm up some star chips, test a couple things out, and I'm here with you to, sh I'm here to show you guys my first, and uh, my first deck I'm going to be using to farm Pegasus at level 40. It feels pretty good so far, it's, it's scoring extremely well, and has felt very consistent. Basically, it is a take on the Holy Guard Shizu deck that that uh, yeah we 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 use to farm a Shizu, keep her locked down. Obviously, the Magician Circles aren't useful versus Pegasus, so instead we are running Guardian Statues, another card we're able to kind of keep Pegasus under control with. And then you just have a typical. The rest of the deck is very familiar to a lot of you who have uh, uh, looked at a couple of the farm decks before. But uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. Um, there's a couple different threats Pegasus has that I will outline as we as we make our way through the farm. A big tusk, yeah, big tusked mammoth is one of them, which uh, messes up the way we end the farm. It, I actually failed one, but it's easy to easy to work around. So we're gonna start off with getting an unhappy girl out, which is beautiful. That uh, is a great way to start the farm. Of course, not necessary. We have many options for keeping Pegasus at bay. Now. Because I have I have uh, grown, ex experienced, I want to say, and learned that Big Tusk Mammoth is in fact a problem for us, I'm gonna I prioritize. We really have no need for more than one unhappy girl on the field. Pegasus has nothing that he can threaten unhappy girl with, aside from uh, rapidly changing what monsters he currently has on the field or currently has available. Uh, I guess now that uh, this was the only monster in his entire deck that can do what you just saw there We'll keep him locked down in the field for now. I I do want to either kill him Well, no, we can't really kill him because of Mitchizur. Mitchizur is too much of a threat to us One thing we can do is uh, Raimi hits for 1400 if we do windstorm Big Tusk Mammoth in a defense mode we can kill him with a Raimi which can be we, we could actually use that to our advantage by the, by the end of this farm one thing I had considered well, well one method of dealing with him to be honest we can we don't even have to do anything uh, ideally what I'm probably just gonna end up doing is leaving him on the field once he's locked down it's perfect and we just need to summon piranha on our second last turn it'll be fine because uh, the unhappy girl will have the entire enemy's field locked up anyhow so it's not a threat whatsoever so we'll just keep rifling through the deck here, as long as we aren't discarding cards, always checking our hand and making sure Unhappy Girl has the deck completely locked down. And I forgot, the only reason I was even considering, <clears throat> sorry, the only reason I was even considering Big, T Big Tusk Mammoth as a threat is because of his effect, monsters your opponent control cannot attack the turn they are summoned. That counters us summoning and activating our, uh, and summoning and attacking with our Piranha in the last turn. Now, this Guardian statue here, I don't want him to start using his effect on us. Actually, I could simply use this effect right here and send him back to my hand. This is perfect. And we still have full lockdown. Beautiful. Uh, just check our hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't want to set two abyssal designators. It's going to clog the field a little too much. We will just discard. Actually, you know what? We can summon and cycle with the Raimi. It speeds the farm up. We get, to, we get to pull another unhappy girl out. Of course, we're not going to get to attack this turn because of the effect of Big Tusk Mammoth. Uh, Curse of Anubis is nice. I like to get one defensive card down in the field. It doesn't. It's not really going to clog us, clog us up at all. We only need the one slot to move on with. Uh, we can put this guy back to face down. That's where he is best. Happy Girl now has a full field lockdown. Raimi, go ahead and suicide. Just get some, some draw happening. Speeds the farm up a little. Uh, never summon a, your third mon. Your, never clog your field with an unhappy girl because you can't suicide unhappy girls. That's a really important thing to know. Uh, I'm, I'm allowed to summon into a third uh, my third slot with a Raimi because we know we're just going to suicide the Raimi and it'll be fine. But until you know that you're drawing your panda early, you cannot afford to um, summon your Amy out like this. Because the only thing that can that can unclog your field is the panda. Now, with this with his field full like this, I uh, actually 
he's running no double tributes in this deck. That's a really interesting thing here. So Pegasus does not have the ability to free up spots on his side of the field to get out or the only thing that threatens us in his entire deck, which is uh, Toon Cannon Soldier. That being said, we are actually free at this point to start lowering our life points because Toon Cannon Soldier is the only thing he has that uh, makes it risky, per se, to do that. So <clears throat> I, don't, I don't have to uh, worry about popping a Lithograph or my Abyssal Designators to uh, help keep our hand empty, but really this, this deck has no problem with hand overflow. Just set Secret Pass to the Treasures and everything else you can carry easily to the end. In fact, I mean, the only reason I'm even thinking about this right now is because we're, ha we're holding on to two unhappy girls and an Abyssal Designator. The end game condition in this deck is tiny. It's totally fine. Uh, seven cards, don't have to worry about that either. Check the lock down. We are good. So we're at five cards left. I just have to plan how, I f how I'm going to do this uh, last turn. Actually, oh, so easy. I, just, I could just bounce them back on my last turn. Uh, I guess he would probably just resummon them though. That might not be the best solution. Uh, one, two, three. I'm just gonna discard an happy girl here. Although I do kind of want to play one. It is a glossy. I have big koala, so I, can, I know I can get away with it. Now, actually, if I uh, there is no threat in Pegasus's entire deck to uh, two big koala, is there? Uh, as long as they're locked down with two uh, with unhappy girl, there is not. Mind you, Toon Summon Skull will hit 2800. So maybe I wait until... Yeah, I probably should wait until... I get Fusion Gate out. If I, if I, Okay, so you can, we can Fusion Summon Koala and, and finish the summon early. But Koala himself can be killed by a Toon Summon Skull. But Toon Summon Skull can't attack the turn he summoned and Unhappy Girl's always going to lock him down. As far as I'm concerned, Toon... Or, uh, Big Koala is 100% safe to get out early. We're going to go ahead and do it. I've pretty much, yeah, I've went through just about everything I can think of. Uh, there's nothing he's going to be able to drop onto the field and immediately kill your Koala with, no matter what. So if you know if you're set up to summon him, just go ahead and get it out. And that's what's going to give us the leeway to work around Big, big Tusk Mammoth for the final turn. Uh, make sure you're not tribute summoning for your unhappy girl that you have the entire board locked down with though because the tunes will just go absolutely ham on you with the direct attacks because we're not running anything to get rid of tune world in this deck because we simply don't need to there's absolutely no need to do it and once you have your fusion ready <clears throat> no no me er, uh, no reason not to because then you are completely safe there's nothing on his nothing he could even possibly touch you with and the, and the reason we don't bother uh, getting rid of the Tomb World is because it prevents us from even having to worry about the Mitchazur spell. Or the Mitchazur trap, sorry. Uh, we, ha we have full field lockdown. Abyssal Designator, why not? Uh, make sure you've, you, you've lowered your life at least one time before the last turn. Guaranteeing you that comeback victory. And with three turns left, all we really have to do at this point is play around the fact that we're going to get. We're going to be getting Piranha out uh, on our second last turn because it will not be able to attack if we get it on our last turn. I failed one farm that way, and I'm sure you guys will fail one as well. It's uh, such an easy thing to do. But here we go. We're going to summon Piranha. Double check. Unhappy Girl has the field locked down, and we have one defensive card placed because in this scenario. Uh, Big Tusk Mammoth could, could have been tributed in his next turn and have the ability to attack immediately, hitting your Piranha. That's why you always, we run the two defensive cards in this deck, Windstorm and Curse of Anubis. You'll have one of them placed, ready for that, keeping your Piranha safe. And uh, we are completely set up for our last turn now. We'll go ahead and end the turn. Coming into our last turn, we'll draw a last card. Finish lowering our life. And open up with Secret Pass. Always don't, or never forget that. We'll open up with Secret Pass on Piranha. So things to remember here, guys. Do not lower your life until you are 100% sure he will not be getting Toon Cannon Soldier out and won't be popping off with Toon Cannon Soldier. Uh, realistically, Toon Can or the, the Soldier's not going to be able to uh, pose too much of a threat to us. One of my strategies to dealing with him is suiciding Raimi into Toon Cannon Soldier. Once you know you have... Uh, unhappy girl, two unhappy girls, and a Raimi on the field. So you're 
if Michizur gets popped and he kills one of your unhappy girls, the other one maintains lockdown on the field. That's an important thing. But that will stop the chain. Realistically, he's not going to be able to 100 to nothing you, but he probably could with Toon Cannon Soldier if he gets it out early enough. But by the time that happens, we will get a Raimi, we'll have two unhappy girls on the field, and we'll be able to counter him at the same time. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this over with. We've Secret Pass to the Treasured, Gift of the Martyr, on to Master of Oz, my favorite combo that has, breath uh, that has given me so much life in the absence of Union Attack in said life. Uh, Curse of Anubis, obviously if I pop that right now, I would just uh, completely screw myself over. Actually, I wouldn't. I could just change it to defense position. But Curse of Anubis isn't glossy anyway. It's not going to get me any bonus points. We can't, uh, oh, we can summon someone. Are either of these glossy? Nope. So there's nothing left to do for points. So we literally just have to attack them straight to the face to finish this off. And then count the points. And this is definitely my first choice, current number one choice, to farm Pegasus at level 40 with. I have a feeling this is going to score 8k no problem. Uh, it has this setup very similar to this. has been scoring 8k for me against many different duelists. This is basically my Ashizu farm deck, modified and optimized for Pegasus. So we scored 83. Ho ho! Ho ho ho! Holy crap! 4,000 gold from one duel. What? I'm sorry, guys. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick snip of this. This one needs to be uh, loot posted. What? Anyhow, coming back to reality, it didn't take us too long. So we scored 8,300, and I'm all cards on the table. Uh, we we played 900 in glossy. We got 900 points in glossy. So this did not score what I would say a natural over 8,000. Seeing if we missed out on anything. Special summon. We did perform a special attribute and a fusion. Activated a spell. Did we activate a trap? We didn't activate a trap. There's a hundred we could have added in there. Without being glossy. Bringing the glossy requirement on this current setup to get it to where it is right now. Which, um, which really isn't hard to pull off. I mean, uh, so 900, obviously 600. If we activated a trap, which there's no reason why we shouldn't have. That would make it a 500 glossy requirement to hit 8k. You guys should, shouldn't really have a problem getting your getting 500 glossy in here. I mean, your designator, your hieroglyph, prioritize glossy in that in inside in that spot there. Um, you could always run instead of the Master of Oz kangaroo, only needing one extra slot, which we you, which you could easily pull off. Um, sub out the koala, sub out the kangaroo, and instead run your run your triple blue eyes. And uh, you could simply tribute at the blue eyes early, not having to worry about hand clogging ever. I probably wouldn't run into that problem anyway. But you could, you can tribute out any blue eyes, and it's pretty much going to hold. It'll, it'll, it'll stand. There's nothing that can kill it, so it's not a never a risk to get it out early. But uh, 500 glossy should not be a problem to hit in this deck. Like I said, you, you, if need be, if you're not getting it from your regular cards, run your prismatic blue eyes. And that prismatic blue eyes and your abyssal designator hieroglyph area should do it for you no matter what. But uh, there you go. This is certainly my number one pick at the moment for farming Pegasus. I'm going to burn through all my chips and get a good grind going. And uh, yeah, definitely going to be posting more videos. I'm going to be posting a budget version, level 30 version for people who uh, feel the need to farm level 30. Honestly, uh, Probably not necessary, but I'll at least put one of those out. But I'll be just swift, just sifting through a couple different farming options, making sure everybody has at least one deck they're going to feel comfortable doing. We got 150,000 points from one farm. That was sick. But uh, yeah, definitely going to be sifting through a couple different options for farming, getting everybody who doesn't necessarily have all the cards that uh, you see on screen here, different options for farming. But uh yeah, guys, thanks for checking this out. More videos to come. Stay tuned. Smash that subscribe button. And of course, once I'm done putting up these farming videos, we're basically going to be streaming for the larger chunk of this day. You'll have to check that out. Our goal is still 8 million points on day one of this Pegasus event. That'll be on twitch.tv slash But uh, as always, guys, don't forget, stay classy.